Welcome to Standish Congregational Church for our online service for the fourth Sunday in Lent, which is known as Lightery Sunday. We lighten things up a little bit on this Sunday, and today our focal scripture is the 23rd Psalm, which I think many of you are familiar with. Special welcome to our online audience, both members of our congregation and others who may be tuning in. We hope others will tune in. I want to introduce the people who are here. We have our Minister of Music, Guy DeStacio, Ministers of Music, Guy DeStacio and Katie Marles. Our reader is Greg Moulton. Um, <clears throat> we are happy to have Sierra Marles and Millie DeStacio with us too. And again, great to have all of you out there. Would you now please join our reader, Greg Moulton, and me in the call to worship, which you will have ahead of time if you're a member of the congregation because I will send it to you by email. Good morning. Uh, please join in the call to worship. God, sometimes the days are long, the nights are even longer, and we're so tired. And then, you soothe us and bring us to gentle places. You are our shepherd and we don't need a thing. Sometimes life is moving too fast and we can't find a moment to breathe. And then you surround us with stillness and bring an even rhythm to our breath. You are our shepherd and we don't need a thing. Sometimes we're parched and it seems nothing will quench our thirst. We're famished, and we can't find anything to eat. And then you refresh us and fill us. You, you are, are our shepherd, and, and we don't need a thing. Sometimes the valley is dark, and the shadows are heavy, and we're afraid. But then we feel your strength, and we have courage. You, you are our shepherd, and, and we don't, don't need a thing. thing. There are times when it seems we're up against the world. You, you show those who push the hardest that you have called us to serve. serve. You, you touch, touch us, and we are blessed. blessed. We will praise you and dwell with you forever. We will we worship, worship you this day, day and always. Our hymn of praise today will be instrumental, played by Guy and Katie. My shepherd, you supply my need.
once again welcome everyone. Although we are suspending public worship at least through March, the life of our congregation goes on. We continue to be the church in other ways besides being physically present in the building. One of those ways is helping each other. And there is a list of people who are willing to get groceries or other needed items for those who cannot get out. And I will be emailing the congregation the announcements page so you'll see those names there. I want to thank you for continuing to support the church financially while we're not meeting in person. And please be aware you can mail your pledge to Allison Crawford, our financial secretary, or go to the donate button on our church website. Our meetings are suspended through March. Uh, we will let you know about April and May. And I think that pretty well covers the announcements this morning. So now I would like to have the message for all ages and I'm going to sit down here and hope Sierra will come and join me. Always with each other. 
So thanks for listening to that silly little story, Sierra. And <clears throat> now we will have the prayer that we usually have, and I hope others here will join in. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for shepherds and sheep. Thank you, God, for shepherds and sheep. Thank you, God, for watching over all of us. Thank you, God, for watching over all of us. Thank you, God, for loving everybody. Thank you, God, for loving everybody. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Sierra. So our hymn for all ages today is also instrumental. I want Jesus to walk with me. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. scriptures from the first book of the prophet Samuel and it tells the story about how the I, the golden age king of Israel David was selected to be king this happened after the very first king of Israel Saul um, had fallen short and God decided they needed another king, and he sent the prophet Samuel to ascertain who that would be. And after looking over lots of people and coming upon a family whose father's name was Jesse and who had lots of sons, Samuel felt a clue that the king would be a member of Jesse's family. So he looked over all of Jesse's sons, and none of them were right. But please listen as Greg reads the story, and you'll find out what happened. The reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what he shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, 
He looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointing is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes to you. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. So ends the reading. The second scripture reading is Psalm 23, which many people know is traditionally attributed to David, the boy in this passage, who was known as a poet and a musician before he, before he was ever a king. So I'm going to say this for you from the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
like a shepherd lead us. Thank you so much. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We heard a story about how David was chosen to be king. David, just a boy, a shepherd boy, had to be brought in from the fields uh, for Samuel to look him over and to know he was the right one. David ended up being the most famous king of Israel, the one that the Israelites always hearkened back to as the best king, even though he was far from perfect. God looks on the heart. God saw something within David that uh, he wanted to use in his service. So David went from being a shepherd to being a king. And in the Hebrew Bible, shepherds and kings are often connected. Uh, some of the prophets speak to the kings as if they were shepherds and usually telling them they are bad shepherds and are letting terrible things happen to the sheep and uh, need to straighten up and fly right. Uh, King David, again, was far from perfect, but what he did right was to maintain a real relationship with God all his life. When he fell short, and when he, did, when he fell short, he really fell short, he would realize it, and he would come before God and ask for, for forgiveness. So, in the 23rd Psalm, which David may have composed, the writer is talking about their personal relationship with God. It is much more personal than any of the other psalms. And it's a good psalm in troubled times. It's often associated with deathbeds or memorial services, but it's really about living life. And I think that that is what my first grade teacher, Mrs. Jackson, had in mind when she had all of her first graders learn it by heart from the King James Bible. We said it every day along with the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, obviously, that was way back in the day when it was legal to do that. And there are lots of reasons today why it's not a good idea to have any particular scripture being quoted in a classroom. But that was then, and I am so thankful that I did learn that a long time ago, and I'm sure that Mrs. Jackson intended it as something to go with us through life. Um, she also ha happened to be one of my Sunday school teachers. She meant that to go with us through life and uh, to help us. So what does that psalm say? It's basically in three parts. And I'll go over the three parts and then go back to them. Because God is with us, we have everything we need, number one. God is with us even through challenges, number two. And God's presence brings us comfort, even in very hard times, even in the face of our enemies. And finally, our ultimate home is with God, now and always. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What does that say to us in this time when we are threatened with this terrible illness that really is terrible, but many of us cannot actually see it, though, and we hope we don't but it's kind of lurking out there, and we are, uh, some places in this country are completely shut down. We are observing social distancing, kind of scary. Um, I shall not want. 
So if you are somebody who believes that we have everything we need because the Lord is our shepherd, maybe we won't have to rush to the grocery store and buy the last ream of toilet paper. Or if we have extra, maybe we can share with somebody. We don't have to be desperate because the Lord is our shepherd. And not only that, others who believe that are there for us. For example, all the people in our congregation who have stepped up and said, um, we'll, buy gro we'll go out and get groceries for people who can't, who can't get out. And it's not only people of faith or Christians who are stepping up that way. There are lots of people out there who care and who are being good people, being their best selves um, in these troubled times. So we have everything we need, and God comforts us in various ways. Uh, according to the psalmist, by still waters through green valleys. I thought about that on Wednesday when I came into the church to be here when the Standish Food Pantry did their distribution. And part of my ride, a part that I especially like, uh, on Route 112 takes me by the Saco River, which right now is fairly still, it isn't always, and it takes me through this beautiful alleyway of tall pine trees, which were very, very green on Wednesday afternoon when I went through them. I found that very comforting, and it reminded me of the psalm, even though it's not a valley, it's not a pasture, we're in Maine. It's pine trees with beautiful green leaves, uh, needles at this time of year. So God is also with us even through the challenges of life. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Think about that, paths of righteousness. Not always easy. Taking the righteous path often has us moving against the mainstream. So again, if you look at it as going to the grocery store and behaving like a good citizen, righteousness would be taking just what we need and not buying up the whole store just for our own family. Not to harp on that, but it is an example that comes to mind. Um, or, taking a stand for a justice issue um, is a way of being righteous, um, and that flies in the face of what most people are doing. But when people in our denomination are out there protesting about climate change or praying for peace publicly, our denomination or any other denomination are doing that, God is with them. God is leading them in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. That's one of the verses that really sticks with people. The challenge of walking through really dark times, really tough times. I think we're in one of those times right now um, in the world. Uh, whenever we are accompanying a loved one at the end of their life on earth uh, to their death, we're definitely walking through the valley of the shadow. We do not have to fear because God is with us. People of faith often feel the presence of God very strongly when they are with someone who's nearing the end of their life. It's one of the mixed emotions. There are many other emotions, but one of them is a sense of God's comfort, and sometimes that takes the form of or is enhanced by the presence of people who come and try to to share some comfort or share God's love. God's presence brings us comfort. 
even in the face of enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Uh, again, God is present to us. God provides for us. God does all kinds of things to make us feel better in tough times, including helping us notice the pine trees with the beautiful green needles, um, including um, other people. Oftentimes, the presence of God comes to us through other people. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The search for home, the longing for home, is one of the deepest human needs. Um, our ultimate home is in God. And that's one of the things the psalmist is talking about here. So the psalmist is looking to God as the ultimate leader, the ultimate shepherd. Many times God is talked about as the ultimate king, and we already mentioned the connection between shepherds and kings. Shepherds, pastors, leaders, first responders who are doing their best are really trying to keep the sheep, are trying to protect the sheep and keep everyone together and going in the, the right direction. But ultimately, and this is very comforting, God is our shepherd. God is the one keeping the sheep. Um, it's not all on us, and when we don't know what to do next, we can turn to God in prayer. Thank you for listening, and amen. So we come to our prayer time. I invited the congregation to share joys and concerns by email or on Facebook. And so I'd like to share uh, what people wrote in. Uh, Bobby Cressy is requesting prayers for her brother and his family, Scott Cressy, locked down in California. Lucy Lawler requests prayers for people who are in isolation. Michelle McCabe requests prayers for health care workers. And Joan Olson is not feeling well, so we want to remember her in our prayers. Also, a couple of joys. Elizabeth Moriarty, plants starting to grow. Stacy Grendel, a joy that they live in an amazing school district where the teachers continue to care about the students and continue to convey that even with online classes. Jennifer Dodd is thankful for a procedure that really helped her to feel better and she says now that she's feeling better, she has to stay in. Um, and so do we all. So we will remember those joys and concerns and others uh, that are on our minds and hearts. Does anyone here have a joy or a concern you'd like to share? Katie? Uh, there's a, a young man in our community that is sick and being tested, Kayla Parsons. Um, And um, for family and friends of my father's sister, Vicki, uh, who passed away yesterday morning. So Katie's aunt Vicki passed away. So we want to remember um, the Fall family in our prayers. And we want to remember all those who are being tested for the COVID-19 virus, including Caleb Parsons. And we want to stress prayers for all who are ill with this uh, coronavirus, prayers for medical personnel and first responders, and everyone whose mental health is adversely affected uh, due to these circumstances. 
Anything else anyone would like to mention at this time? All right, please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks and praise for this beautiful day. We're here in Standish, Maine. It's chilly, but not freezing. The sun is shining. Plants are starting to grow. We're thankful to see the little green shoots. We're thankful to see the brightening pine needles on the trees, promises of spring. We're thankful for our families and our friends. We're thankful for safety and health. We're thankful that right now in Maine, we are still able to get out, and this morning we are able to come together to put together an online worship service, which we pray will be meaningful to those who see it. We ask your blessings on all those who have been named this morning, for those who have lost loved ones, including the Fall family, in the passing of Katie's Aunt Vicki, for those being tested for the coronavirus, including Caleb, for Jennifer and Joan, who are not feeling well, but we are thankful that Jennifer is doing better. We're thankful that our church is able to offer the building while we're not spending a lot of time in meetings here, we're able to offer the building to the Standish Food Pantry. We give thanks that they are able to stay open and that the food distribution last Wednesday went so well. We give thanks for all of those who are stepping up in these tough times, stepping up in ways that they never expected. The first responders, the teachers and professors who are conducting online classes, the students who are continuing to do their work even though they're not in school, the parents and children who are exercising patience with one another at home, even when that's hard. We ask you, dear God, to help us, all of us, to be our best selves during these times, to help one another, to remember that because you are our shepherd and our God, while we do have wants, our needs are fulfilled. We give thanks that our ultimate home is in you. We give thanks for your loving and continual presence with us to lead, guide, and inspire us. All these things we pray in the name of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today, we do not pass the offering plate, obviously, but we invite you in the online congregation to take some time as Katie plays the offertory to reflect on ways that you can continue to support the congregation financially and in other ways while we cannot meet together.
generosity of offerings and of spirit. And before the service ends, there is one more person that I need to acknowledge. Um, I should have mentioned at the beginning, Dave Heath. Thanks to Dave Heath for being here to record the service and um, to edit it a bit before it goes out into the world. And speaking of going out into the world, please listen to the benediction. Go forth into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people and take care of God's creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. <laughs>